Hello and welcome back to another Star Citizen video. It is the best in show day for IAE 2953. And oh boy, oh boy, oh no, the 600i is cool. <laughs> it's cool. It looks like a Covenant ship right now. And if you do not know what's a Covenant ship, it's, it's, a, it's a ship from hate. I mean, not a Covenant ship. Sure, the Covenant is much more pinkish versus purplish, but still, still, it is, oh, it is a nice, nice, nice skin. It's free on top of that. <laughs> anyway, it looks good on other ships as well, but 600i really, really takes the cake this round, really. So, before we begin, like, subscribe, hit the notification. Eh. Like, subscribe, hit the notification button to help this channel grow. Oh, what's wrong with me? <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm, I'm actually lost for words. The skins are very, very nice. Actually, to make it even better, I was expecting... No, no, I kind of expect this color, but I was expecting wavy lines. Actually, there is two things I was like expecting per se. I was expecting like purple and pink, because there's a pink over here. But I know the date giveaway is here, the color scheme. And... I was guessing would they do a animated skin? They did not. What they do is a dual color pearlescence. Is that what they call it? Pearlescence color? Yeah, it, it's still cool. It's still cool nonetheless, but this type of color scheme it's already available on the talent series. Or the talent ship. Talent how? Talent on the talent. Yeah, so it's not a new thing, but still free skin. I I wouldn't I cannot complain. Plus blue, where did I get that? Now, where is this blue? Yeah, I couldn't see any of the blue. I see more. I see purple, dark purple, light purple, pink. Yeah, okay. At, at least, at least this this blue hue or teal. This teal, okay, it's cool. Baby blue. No, it's not even a baby blue. And at the same time, we're gonna talk a little bit about ship today. But we cannot build, or I cannot do my traditional any, uh, annual carrack build because there are a few things I'm missing on, on today. So we have to do it another day. But before we go there, we get ship posters, which is nice, which is great. Unfortunately, a big bad news, which is the champion for Ship Showdown 23. We don't get anything extra other than we can fly it for another one full month. Then again, for people who owns the, the Corsair, why would I want? Why do I need it? Do I actually need it? <laughs> yeah, that's why it's a little sad. The previous years are much better as compared to this year. Miles apart. Of course, the best one was the Karak, the first Karak winner. We get a helmet, which has Karak, uh, I think the, the emblem of Anvil behind it which is nice. The next one is Argo Cargo, which is you get a backpack. Yep, yep, backpack. I don't know if it's a backpack for armor or just a backpack, a simple backpack for civilian use. In this case, it's a flare. Yeah, so at least it's wearable. And then obviously the Caterpillar, which is the first ship showdown winner. And last year's winner, the Karak gets a miniature ship. I would still want a miniature ship of the winner with the color scheme. That would be cool. That would be cool. Yeah, but unfortunately, we don't get it. The nice part about the ship showdown is we get more special upgrade offer, which is great. This would play a big, big role in the in my annual Karak build. Yeah, we want to see how cheap can we get the Karak. That's it. And of course, we got complete pack as well for those who want it. But I think that's for concierge. Yeah for internet addicts like me. Oh, and last but not least, we have actually weapons and armor, which is nice, but it's not on the ship showdown. Oh, no, sorry, it's not the best in show skin. A little bit missed opportunity, but it is nice though. It is nice. And this is the time I can actually say, should you spend money on skins? I would say no. Should you spend money on armor packs? Okay, this one is a little bit on the gray area. Personally, I would not want to. $37.50, that is one ship already. Yeah, if you pay the full price, $50, that's a full-blown ship. For armor, 
it's a tough it's a tough call right armor at least it's usable in game and you get weapons and you don't get just one armor one piece of armor is about 13 dollars 12 dollars yeah that's the pack that's a pack with armor and weapons oh sorry armor and weapons too wow it is actually a nice color scheme but personally if it's not a special like if it's if this is a limited best in show armor i would buy okay i would buy if it's a limited best in show or limited citizen con which i did right citizen con they give you a custom citizen con skin weapon and a suit not armor i don't think it's an armor yep I would buy that that one I would buy because it's I treat it as a uh, a convention uh, goodie bag that's how I put it that's how I put it okay so that's that now we're gonna jump in to the ship talk and we're gonna start with the big of the big boys I know it's all sold out the question is would I have it in my hangar okay so this is the part where I would talk a little bit about what ship would I want to pick up for this year's IAE 2953 and in this case we got a lot a lot a lot of ships and we're going to go through some of them not all of them actually no we're going to go through all of them but I won't put too much emphasis on them because I'm going to do a recap not to say a recap but technically I was thinking because I would probably make one more video about what I would want in my fleet. Okay, that's a bit different. It's, it's not ships that I would pick up. Okay, okay. Uh, for IE2953. Okay, it's a different, it's a different, it's a different way. So we're gonna go through all of them. So it's gonna be a long, long video. So strap in my friends and let's do some ship talk. Ship. <laughs> oh my goodness, it sounds like anyway. 890 jump would i pick up 890 jump the answer is it's a capital ship it's a nice ship it's a luxury ship if you can afford it this is technically a mobile base okay 890 jump is a mobile base pioneer is a mobile base the only difference between the 890 jump and the pioneer the pioneer can build a base whereas the 890 jump is a luxury yard in this case i would put more emphasis on trying to get the pioneer I would do that but what's better than a pioneer we got a polaris <laughs> you can grab the polaris easy but of course if you want to be a space a dedicated space trucker the hall e now the a2 hercules is on a weird place the hammerhead is a nice ship but if you're talking about spending such amount of money you want something a little bit more like a playground i would definitely want to do that I would like to get ship that can be a playground to other people out in the verse even with uh, even though if it's not friends like just random player just show up you know do something for for a better cause in this case pioneer is it's a it's a wordy wordy pick i i have to admit i would love to pick up the pioneer but i keep missing out the window so one day i would try to yeah 8, 850 the problem is 850 850 Anyway, so we have the Polaris. So my go-to is the Polaris right now. And the Polaris you can upgrade to. You can ship upgrade to the Polaris, which is great. And that's the reason why I recommend. So we're gonna go for the highest price. Yeah, that's the reason why it's, I would say Polaris is a more safer bet. But I, I, I would try, you know what? One fine year, maybe next year, save up this much and then try to get the Pioneer IAE. This is actually good, you know what? Okay, moving on. Hull E Space Trucker, nice. Her A2 Achilles, I would skip to that too niche. Hammerhead is a nice pickup. So I'm going to leave it there for now. The Nautilus, it's a niche ship because it's a mine, lay, mine laying ship and a mine sweeper. So before it comes out, yeah, it's a concept stage. I, I just say, I'll put it on the side. Not a dismiss, but I'll put it on the side at the moment. Next up, we have the Odyssey. So we're going to talk a little bit about mobile base that you can possibly upgrade to like the polaris so we have the polaris we have the odyssey okay the merchantman is a bit special and we have the carrack so three of this ship which is actually wow 600 700 750 
So the Carrack is my base Millennium Falcon because it has all the facilities. Now the Odyssey, if I'm not mistaken, it has a medical bay as well, which means it's a worthy contender to me to be my mobile base ship. The Polaris has it as well. The Polaris is more offensive. The Odyssey is an exploration version. And the Carrack has the best scanning suite in the ship. So in this case, if I, I can only pick one. If I want, of course, I want all three, right? But if I were to pick only one, if you want really, really self-sustainable, the Odyssey, Odyssey hands down. The Polaris is nice and great, but the Odyssey has everything the Polaris has minus the Torpedo Bay. But in return, it has a self-sustainable mining rig, which means it can stay in space for the longest period of time in the whole entire ship lineup. The whole, yeah, no, the whole entire ship lineup. Even the capital ships like the Kraken, the Idris, the Javelin, obviously Javelin will take the most amount of resources, so the Odyssey wins. Easy, easy, easy pick. Next up, okay, so we're gonna put the Perseus aside because the Perseus, the Nautilus, the Hammerhead, these three ships is actually very interesting. It's depending on what style you want to play. The A2, like I said, the A2 is only orbital bombardment. Oh, no, no, not even orbital bombardment. It's planet surface bombardment. It is literally the most useless ship in space. For the price tag, seven fifty. dollars I actually, I would rather get the Perseus. Personally, I'm more in line with Perseus right now because it has big, big cannons. Yes, the Nautilus is nice, but Nautilus is the niche, the second niche ship versus the Hercules. The Hammerhead is a much better pick for group play, for pickup groups as well. But I, I, would, I would go for the Perseus. The Perseus has big weapons and you can shoot this guy from afar. So basically you can kind of snipe in a way. Yeah, sure the Idris will kill you first, but yeah, the Perseus is great. I, I, I would pick up the Perseus versus all these four ships. And here comes the little weird part on Star Citizen is where would Merchantman be? Now I did say I, I have a list of ships, right? The Merchantman, honestly, it's number one on my list. It is the ship for me <laughs> that I want. Number one, it's Alien. Number two, it's a Bazaar. And that's about it. Number three, it can do cargo hauling. So it can do everything on the P, no, the less, no, the non-combative side everything okay? a little bit of hauling it has a unique shopping experience and it can do a little bit of pew pew the only question is i do not know what's the weapon weaponry because previously it has a front it has a nose weapon and is it it is size six or size seven i've forgotten about it because they they, they revamped this whole entire thing a lot they rework a few times so I do not know if they still maintain the nose weapon. If they do, and I do hope it's a size 7. If it's a size 7 and above, that means it can do quite a lot of pew pew, which is half a Perseus. And in that case, it's literally the jack of all trades ship. Literally. Plus it's alien, so it's everything I want. <laughs> 650, it is an okay pickup. I know it will go up in price. 100% it will go up in price. Yep, when it's flight ready. The only question is, would it hit 890 jump level? I don't know. Would it hit $1,000? Also, question mark. I don't know. I do hope not. Because if it hits the $1,000 threshold, it's a bit painful. My guess, probably 800 850 Let's put it this way. 850 probably is an inline. Wow, this is almost 1000 850 I, I, I don't predict too much. It, I have a feeling it might go up to a thousand because it's alien ship. Next up, we have some other utility ships out there like the Orion and the Arastra. Hall D as well, but I'm going to skip the Hall D because if you want the Hall D, might as well just get the Hall E. 750, 550. There is a slight little difference. In fact, there's a, quite a gap, but that $200, the Hall E is like the king of all trucking space hauling no brainer 
like the Orion. The Orion, I would I would grab the Orion. 655, yeah, no, Orion, hands down. And that is technically my second or third ship on the list that I would pick up. It, it is. So Merchantman 1. Number 2 is either the Odyssey or the Polaris. And number 3 is the Orion. I like space mining. And coming from EVE Online, I, I used to I used to run mining operations. So yeah, I think it kind of stuck with me a little bit. Plus it's huge. <laughs> the Orion is cool. And it's my money making ship. Let's put it this way. This is a, this is a money making ship. Slightly money making ship. And then the Odyssey is just, you know, fly for fun. Uh, if I need to militarize, then I'll I will swap to the Polaris. If I can have these two ships, it would be fantastic. But if I were to pick. Yeah, if, personally, I would pick the Polaris personally and then try to work my way to an Odyssey. I reckon I would definitely try to earn it in game if I were to have the Odyssey and the Polaris. Yeah, a bit tough. But yeah, Orion would be my. Sh you know what? I think I, I have to swap the position. Merchantman 1, Orion number 2, because these are the two main ships to make money in game. And then the rest is just something that I would do on the side for fun. Liberator, I would skip. If I'm picking up the Orion, the Arastra is an easy skip. Would you pick up the Arastra if you want something in between? The problem with Arastra is the price tag. Yeah, it's, it's just the price tag. If it's cheaper, I, I wouldn't mind. Liberator is literally a no-go for me. Yeah, literally. Even though if you're a small organization, small org, if you want to play Guerrilla Warfare, the Liberator is... A little bit hard to recommend though, it's mainly for big fleets. Big fleets, big on organization. Warpoint is 525. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know how to recommend. It's it's tough. Hall D, Hall C. Yeah, if you want to really get the Hall C, get a Hall D. Easy. M2 Hercules, an, another odd ship in the verse to pay money. A little bit odd to keep it. And then we got the 600i. The 600i is awesome, nice, and yeah, best in show edition. You can pick up the best in show edition. Oof, sweet. Prowler is a dropship, alien dropship. There are better options out there. Skip 600i, no. Reclaimer, right now Reclaimer is the biggest salvaging ship out there at $400. I think it's a steal until they come up with a new huge capital ship salvaging ship, which I am paying attention to at the moment. Hopefully they announce we have no news. I'm I'm keeping an eye out. If there is a capital ship that is a salvaging ship, I would try to get it. But for now, the reclaimer stays, yeah, stays where it is. It is not the top priority, but it is in the list of what I want. And if you realize most of the ships that I've picked are more industrial ship versus combat ship, because combat ship out there is usually on the bottom. Huge ships, you want you want something like that. But at the same time, I do have a Polaris. So I have a combat ship on one end, if I were to want it. So we claim it's nice. Gen Genesis Starliner, I do not know where to put. C2 Hercules. Now C2 Hercules is a good pick. If you want something ground, yeah. If you want to do something with a lot of ground vehicles, then the then the C2 Hercules is a decent pick. This is the only Hercules platform that I can actually recommend. But that's about it. Next up we have oh next up we have the Galaxy. Now the Galaxy is nice. $380. This is a modular ship and any modular ship always have a place in my hangar. If I can get it, I will get it. And it's going to be the bare bones version. I don't want to spend too much on modules. So that's the reason. Yeah. So Galaxy is definitely in, in, the, in the hangar at the moment as a ship upgrade. Most of these ships that I want is, is in ship upgrade form. Next up, we have the Valkyrie. Valkyrie is a nice drop ship. Very, very nice drop ship. And it's the drop ship that I would recommend. 375 is cheaper than the rest and it's better than the rest. That's how it is. <laughs> it can carry vehicles. That's why. Next up, we have the Crucible. The Crucible right now is on, it's, it's in concept. It is a little niche. And the Crucible, I have a role play section for it. If I were to get the Crucible, it will be the Crucible and the M50. I'm going to use it as a race pit stop. And that's about it. 
I know you can repair other ships as well, but the primary role play that I would love to is the Crucible plus the M50, a mobile racing pit stop. And if I want to do racing, yeah, I will just bring these two ships up. Simple as that. <laughs> Easy. Constellation Phoenix, question mark. Uh, I would say if you want a Constellation Phoenix, just get the 600i. Next up, we have the Endeavor. The Endeavor is a modular ship. It is a capital class, so they say. So this, this will be in my hangar. This would be, this is technically the fourth or fifth in my list because it has, it's a detachable ship. That means you can have a station and you can detach and you have a smaller ship. And I can grow space farming. You know what? That's the reason I want to do space farming. That's why the Endeavor is on the list for sure. Starfarer used to be on the list, but Starfarer, okay, so that's a Gemini and that's a base. In my opinion, doesn't really matter. $300, $340, $40 difference. Yeah, I think it's okay. I think it's okay. But more importantly, the German, the Starfarer series is not for me. As much as I really, really want to put squeeze into my fleet list, but it's, I, I, I do not know how to squeeze because I don't really need the Gemini, to be honest. Because I would just upgrade to the Odyssey. Tough. Tough call. Caterpillar is nice and modular, which I love too. The only question is what type of modules would we get on the Caterpillar? That's it. If the Caterpillar has a medical bay, it will be in my fleet. The only question is Caterpillar versus the Galaxy. The Galaxy actually wins hands down because the Galaxy can build bases. Yes, that's right. That's the reason why I put the Galaxy instead of the Caterpillar. And that's about it. Yeah, but what I would do is I would get the Caterpillar and then have a ship upgrade to Galaxy because the Caterpillar is flight ready. You can fly in the game, play around, see if you like it or not. And that's about it. Redeemer is a gunship. $330 and uh, the Valkyrie takes it. The Valkyrie takes it hands down. Next up, we have the Mole. The Mole is a multi-crew mining ship. Now, this is the reason why I say the Aura Straw is a little bit weird in pricing. $315 jump all the way to $575. Like I said, I would like to see this full price $500. I think that's okay. Full price five hundred dollars. Then the Orion maybe seven fifty at the end of the day when it's released, or maybe eight fifty. Okay, if Orion goes to eight fifty, then Arastra, because this is concept. Okay, it will go up in price. I have a feeling this will end up at six fifty. To be honest, I have a feeling six fifty. Yeah, it's a bit tough. In this case, the mole wins hands down as a multi crucial. Really. The Arastra is nice and cute, but the price tag, the price tag, it's tough, tough to recommend. We, we have to know in-game as well. In-game currency might be a bit different. Uh, I would rather get it in-game. Yeah, I'd rather get it in-game. Next up, we have the Constellation Aquila. The Aquila is nice, 315. I would say skip first. I would say skip because there are better options for the Constellation series. Next, we have the Eclipse. Eclipse is an easy, easy skip because I would rather get the Retaliator Bomber. Cheaper and better and modular. <laughs> stuff, yeah, stuff ever we don't need to say. Now we go to my favorite, in my opinion, in my personal opinion, this is the best PVE bounty hunting ship or bounty ship. I would say bounty hunting because it has no place to store a live captured prisoner this ship is the best pew pew ship yes some will argue about what about the f8 lightning now the f8 lightning is great it is the king of pvp i did say right king of pvp but not pve pve is where you want to be in space as long as you can right get missions and then that's about it and the Vanguard series has a bit. Now the, Van the Vanguard Harbinger is a bomber variant. That's what we don't want. We want the Vanguard Sentinel. The Vanguard Warden is great, 260, cheaper, right? Cheaper, but the Vanguard Sentinel has an EMP drive. So that plays a better role in general as the ultimate, my ultimate 
PVE bounty ship. That's it. Because what you can do is you can do the combat missions, and then if you do bounty hunting, the only question is, oh, when it comes to bounty hunting, we will see. We will see how bounty hunting goes. Because if you say about bounty hunting, there's only one ship that fills that category. And that ship, not, not even a Corsair, right? Not even a Corsair, not even a Scorpius. It's all the way down. And no, Santo, yeah, no, no, no. Constellation, no, not even, oh, it's, yes, no, 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 no. It's the Cutlass Blue. Only the Cutlass Blues fulfills that role. It, if it's not Cutlass Blue, it will be the Zeus Mark II Mark at 190. Only these two ships. Because these two ships has an EM, this, this has an EMP drive and a QED. I need to double check if there is a prisoner bay. I know the Cutlass Blue has it. So yeah, at the end of the day, if you want to do pure pew pew, the Vanguard series. Easy. My recommendation. Because it has a bait. The key thing is it has a bait. It has DPS and it has a bait. Way better. But my daily driver, right? That's where we go to. Retaliate as a bomber, nice. Harbinger, I would skip, get the Sentinel. It's the Apollo Medivac. If I were to have a daily driver, the Apollo Medivac probably gets the kick or takes the kick because it's a medical ship. It is on paper the best medical ship in the game it's basically served as a respawn ship so if i don't want to bring out a carrot if i know if i want a little bit more nimble a little bit pew pew not the best pew pew ship but i will do a lot of first person shooter the, the, the medivac is easy if i were to a group play i would also bring out the medivac yep if you want to do combat first person combat yeah so in in terms of combat we have two ships side by side sentinel if you want to do space pew pew medivac if you want to do ground assault or bunker missions or anything that is personnel the blade easy skip warden yeah so if you if you can't afford the sentinel some people will say it's 15 dollars it might be a bit too much then yeah the, the warden is still worth picking up yeah that's about it uh, mercury star runner i would skip data running right now it's a question mark Apollo triage, the difference between the medivac and the triage, the medivac is has better armor. Armament, probably the same. Better armor, which means I can go hot in the combat zone and I can serve as a wambulance. I'll definitely call the, the Apollo triage my wambulance. That's for sure. <laughs> Next up, we have the Ares. Now, the Ares series is my second pick for pve not pvp pvp this ship is terrible but pve the aries gets my second pick at 250 dollars not bad not bad but the reason why it's a second pick because it doesn't have a bait i would rather grab the vanguard sentinel and if you pay ten dollars more the warden easy e easy decision 400i, I would skip because I would get the Corsair. Corsair is much better in the multi-crew department. And I dare say that the step up for multi-crew ship, yeah, it is quite interesting. You can get the Constellation Andromeda, play around and get a ship upgrade to the Corsair. If you don't like the Constellation Andromeda, just upgrade to the Corsair. Yeah, the 400i, I would skip, like I said. So this two ship is actually head to head. The only difference is the price tag and the play style both of them plays very very differently the corsair is very full frontal assault whereas the constellation andromeda relies a little bit about you know not to say hit and run but quite close to hit and run burst damage sustain damage that's how you put it burst sustain this one has a backup parasite ship so it can actually use as a decoy to you know kite around the corsair so it's still DPS, none the least, still DPS. So yeah, I say do check it out. Next up, we have the Scorpius. Now we go to the dog fighting ship, the single seat pilot. Uh, I mean, single seat, single pilot combat ship. In this case, we have the Scorpius. Hopefully we don't care. Let's cut the steel name, Scorpius and Terrace. Nope, Scorpius. We're going to focus on Scorpius. 
Harbin is a nice exploration ship, but question mark. Santok Yai, Defender, Hurricane, uh, Spirit we don't care, Taurus we don't care, and the Zeus. Okay. The Zeus Mark II to be precise, because the Mark II has more armaments versus the normal one. Zeus has size 4 weapons, or size 4 hard point for the pilot. That means it is actually on par with Hurricane, single pilot. Defender, single pilot. Oh, no, actually, Defender is a, it's on a weird scale. Alien ship, and they fight like a medium fighter. And Defender fight like almost, actually Defender fights like a single uh, light fighter. So it's expensive. <laughs> Santokya is medium fighter. So this one will go up in price. The Scorpius and Terrace and Scorpius, the base Scorpius, if it's a single pilot, output the same amount of DPS, I dare say. Yeah, the, the spirit is, is a whole different... Yeah, the A1 spirit is a bomber. No, not bomber. Luxury. That's a luxury ship. So no, skip. Constellation Taurus is a hauling ship. This is a very, very good... In fact... In fact, I dare say too, it is the second best daily driver for people who do not want to spend more than $200. <laughs> this is a cheap ship. Well, $200 is not that cheap. Zeus, all right. And that's about it. It is the question, which one would I pick, right? Scorpius? Scorpius single pile. Oh, no, you know what? I can't use a Zeus. Okay, that horrible mistake. I can't use the Zeus. Zeus is a tree pilot. It's it's a it's a tree pilot, tree cruise ship. So nope, 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 nope. Scorpius, Santokyai, or the Hurricane. Hurricane and Scorpius needs two pilots. The Santokyai needs one. So in this case, it's just Hurricane versus the Scorpius. In my opinion, you need friends to play. I would skip. It's not really solo pilot friendly. It's cool. It's nice. It's great, but no, uh, so at the same time, Santokyai versus the Saber, not the Comet, the Super Hornet, and the Freelancer Misk. So this is the part where it's weird. Like there's so many combat ships out there. Yeah, we have reached to a portion where there's a lot, a lot of combat ships. Which combat ship would I pick? Rather than going through all of them, right? So let's start off with Scorpius. Scorpius, actually, I would pick the Scorpius. The Scorpius is a nicer silhouette versus the Hurricane, but both of them are equal, in my opinion. Hurricane is cheaper. If money is a problem, yeah, Hurricane it is. Santok Yai is alien, but Santok Yai is a pure one-seat uh, one fighter. The Defender, actually, I would recommend the Defender. Defender has a bait, so it's a different category by its own already. So it's Santok Yai versus Saber versus Super Hornet, Base Hornet, Freelancer, Cutlass Series. The, no, the Spirit is not part of it. Voucher is just a mining ship. So Car 2 All, Gladiator. Gladiator is an odd ship. Easy skip. SRV is a tugboat utility ship. The Razor. Razor is speed. So speed, it's a speed prospector. It's a mining ship. Man, oh. Did I say mining for a voucher? Voucher is a salvaging. Yeah, I kind of missed that. Messed that up a little. Mantis, skip, retaliate the base. I would recommend Razor, Freelancer. Okay, we reached to the part where there's lots of ships. <laughs> and if I were to pick a de facto single pilot combat ship out there. Okay, de facto. I have to give my vote to Santok Yai for Alien. $220. Yeah, not the best. Not the best ship. But it's Alien right now. So I'll put it there. Because the Santok Yai might rival against Super Hornet and Saber. The Freelancer Miss flies like a brick. Unfortunately, I cannot recommend this for PvP. PvE, yes, but PvP is horrible. Yeah, because the Super Hornet and the Saber Comet would outmaneuver you. And of course, if you can afford the F8 Lightning, that's the best of the best, the pinnacle of combat. But in this case, yeah. No, Santok Yai, Saber, or the Super Hornet. Kato All can recommend. Zeus is a different thing. Retaliator is a different thing. That's it. Wow, out of all the combat ships, those are the three ships I'll recommend. As much as I want to recommend Talent Strike and whatnot at the ships below here, like the Gladius, the Buccaneer, 
No, nothing come close. Nothing come close with this three ship. If Santoya performs like how Super Hornet and Saber performs, that's it. That's it. The, the rest of the ships below here, I would just buy in the verse and have it and, and play for, and, yeah, no, play for fun. No, that's it. That's that for the combat ship. Now for my daily driver, a cheap daily driver, I have to give my vote to either Zeus, Mark II, Clipper. The Freelancer series used to be nice, but the Freelancer, I need to double check if that's a tractor bay on a uh, tractor bay, tractor beam. Zeus versus a C1. Where is a C1? 135 Warborn. That's nice. C1. And no, actually, you know what? I, I checked some of the stats already. It's either the C1 or the Zeus. It's either these two. Main reason is tractor beam, it has enough cargo bay for a lot of stuff and everything. Yes, the Cutlass Black has a tractor beam as well. It's cool, it's great, but not cool enough. Yeah, it, it got dethroned, plus the price, yeah, price hike. It got dethroned. And that's it. Yeah, I, I would love to go through all the small ships, but... Nomad. Nomad is actually in the next page. Nomad has a tractor beam as well. $80, cheaper than the Cutlass Black. That's that. Light, light fighter. Okay, light fighter. Because I think I need to do another video. It's getting too long already. What small fighters will I get? What what would a newbie, a new citizen in the verse would buy? Yeah, because I've been talking about big, big ships. All the small ships is nice. Okay, we have we have reached to the point where we have a lot, a lot of varieties. 350R, Zeus, Cutlass, Hornet, Raph. Okay. Yeah, Ref, I have to I have to ignore Ref. Ref doesn't have tractor be uh, beam, which is a bit sad on paper. So I need to double check a few things. Yeah. I, I think I think it has. I think Raf has 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 a tractor beam, right? If not, why, right? Why? Because I've checked some of the stats. It didn't list uh, it didn't list down Ref has a tractor beam, which is weird. I need I need to get it in game and find it out. Gladius is nice. Yeah, no, we, we, we reach a very, very odd point and I'm gonna, it's going to take way too long because it's, this video is going to hit 40 minutes mark, which is something that I don't want to do. And that's it. That's all I have for you for today. I thought this ship talk is going to be simple and easy, but it's going to be way too long. Maybe I need to swap into different bite size per se. Anyway, this is, a, this is a long ship talk anyway. I already decided that this video is going to be a little long because best in show, what else can you show? Best in show, right? All vehicles, easy skip for me, no matter how you see it. <laughs> All vehicles, easy skip. Yeah. You know what? I think that's about it. I think that's about it. If you want something more expensive, you I'm going to close it. The daily driver, my daily driver pick for IAE2953. You have reached to this end. I really, really do appreciate that you watch until this end. So yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification button and help this channel grow. And my daily driver pick, flight ready. It has to be flight ready. Because if it's not flight ready, what's the point, right? The C1 Spirit. The C1 Spirit is my daily driver pick of the year. Until the Zeus M2 Clipper is flight ready. Yeah, I don't like, I, to be honest, I don't like the color scheme. I really don't. This is terrible, terrible. I know some people will like it, but yeah, this is this is the only small little caviar I can put. Yeah, because of the base color is ugly. Just get a skin in game. <laughs> don't don't buy don't buy skins. I mean, I won't buy skins. Whew. That's all, folks. That's all I have for you for today. Until then. I will see you in the verse and fly safe. Yeah. Yeah. Suilin. Suilin is a discounted. There we go. Warborn. I will end this, right? The ship to get for this year, IAE 2953. It is the Suilin, $65.
lifetime insurance yes a lot of people will debate about that but i don't care this ship is a must buy for me for this year see ya my friends